What's happening? Hey man, Mike is back with another video. Back here to talk about Google and their Pixel 7 Pro. What a solid device. Shout out to the bucket head they sent out a little bit ago. It's a little bit too small for my head, but it still looks kind of nice and fly with the black, you know what I'm saying? How has this device been? I've had it for, what, a little over a month or two months now? And I've kind of been quiet a little bit. You know, I've dropped an accessory video on it. But how have I been enjoying and not enjoying the device? Well, that's very easy. I've been enjoying the device. It has been super solid from hardware to software, cameras, and battery life. You really couldn't ask anything else from this phone. Priced relatively very well compared to the market. So before we get into those segments <laughs> and why this phone has been such a delight and why I would recommend it to you guys, Make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that way it's my videos. So we should sit back to the channel and see what's cracking. And also let me know down in the comment section below, are you a fan of the Google Pixel ecosystem? Are you within it? What Pixel have you used before or are you currently using? And are you looking forward to next year and what Google brings? Let me know down in the comment section below. Now let's get into the video. Now in terms of hardware, I have a case on it right now from Rinky, shout out to Rinky. I like this clear matte case you know I, I think they could have did the matte a lot better but i've been enjoying the design like i it feels good in the hand i can access things relatively well when i'm you know moving around on it you know team pixel did send me a case but it was for the wrong phone they sent me the, the pixel 6 pro <laughs> case and not the 7 pro so shout out to the gift from google attempt but with the rinky case on it it kind of complements the size as well the accent the gold accent color with this you know olive hazel green color has actually been nice to use i've been tempted to get a d brand skin to go like what's that that, that black or the damascus black uh with it which would look super fire with the gold like uh, there's some things i'm tempted to try with the pixel 7 pro but i've been enjoying this device overall the hardware is super solid the buttons feel good i do wish the the power button was a little bit higher and the volume rocker was also thus a little bit higher just a little bit but it's not bad otherwise i can access everything no problems clicking is satisfying through the software Pressing and holding the power button to access Google Assistant has been a joy to use as well. I think you can still swipe from the corners to access Google Assistant, but having the power button and it being baked into the power button has been great to use. Haven't had any problems with the hardware so far. I've dropped it a few times. I think it's, I know it's glass, but it's def, I, the screen is definitely a PO LED, basically plastic, so not necessarily glass. And you can feel it when you touch it a lot of times it's it's different touching this screen as opposed to actual glass on like the s22 ultra and even the z flip 4 has a little bit more firm uh pressing or touch when tapping on it this you can hear you can't hear it on the other ones like that so but nonetheless it has survived from drops and falls even though the drops are like you know what two and a half three feet high off the table off the couch because it, it is slippery no problems no scratches whatsoever what does scratch relatively easy is the visor the camera visor but to me with the gold finish it kind of adds some character to it and it actually doesn't look bad so i actually don't mind those fine line scratches and whatnot that takes place on the on the camera visor because it actually adds a little bit of style to it so i, I do like that jumping into the next category of camera hardware I mean, it's google like what else what else do we expect the cameras are crazy solid on here you're talking about a phone or a device you can just pick up and you know you're gonna get a good shot out of that is the pixel 7 and pixel 7 pro and with the pixel 7 pro getting that additional camera the telephone the telephoto lens you really get nice shots up close and with that macro mode you definitely get nice cool little small shots that you could get that you could also adjust you know you didn't if you didn't want it to auto switch to macro and just wanted to zoom in before you hit macro mode you can do that too but you get solid shots out of the cameras on the pixel 7 pro they most definitely rival the iphone it's kind of crazy how iphone immediately caught up in the camera department but i would take the pixel 7 pro i would probably then take the ooh, 
as tough. I like a little bit more of the vibrancy from the Samsung Galaxy ecosystem of cameras, specifically the S22 Ultra. And then I would probably take the iPhone. Now video wise, I would probably go between the Samsung and the Apple for video. Video has improved on the, the Google Pixel 7 Pro for sure. But once you hit that, that cinematic blur mode or whatever, that's where it, it has its moments where it looks really clean, but then it looks artificial. And it's because it is, but if they refine it, and then they also bring 4K for it as well, I think that's where you're gonna see cinematic blur take off for the Pixel 7 Pro. But as it stands, you're not gonna go wrong using video or photos from the Google Pixel 7 Pro. And wait till Google finally puts their foot in a video, then what's Apple gonna do, right? Because that's Apple's kind of bread and butter right now is video. And if the Pixel 7 Pro can catch up to that, along with the, the Galaxy S22 Ultra already, or the Galaxy S22 series for the most part overall, already caught up with video for the most part, once the Pixel gets there, it's, I mean, come on. The Pixel 8 Pro is probably gonna be crazy, but we're talking about the 7 Pro right now. And can I recommend it for cameras? Yes, I most definitely can. Jumping into software, I heard all the problems with the 6 Pro. I get it. I heard it. I understand it. Google did something different with the software on the Pixel 7 Pro where it basically came out near flawless. Now the one nitpick I have is that the screen or the refresh rate or the touch interaction with trying to swipe away things within a notification panel can be a pain sometimes. Like it won't actually go away, it's sticky. So you have to really swipe it away. I thought by forcing 120 hertz within developer options would change that, I don't think it did but I would like to see that improved upon. I don't know why it's the only device I have that problem with. Any other device, you have it once in bloom when you try to swipe something away and it doesn't swipe, but like it's routine that you're almost expecting I'm gonna have to try to swipe this way a couple times. I don't know what that quite is. Is it a hardware thing? Is it a software thing? That's the only like nitpick I have of the software because everything else works flawlessly. It works just fine. Uh, it's using a Google Home, Google Assistant. That's another story. But using them overall has been crazy solid. All the Google apps work, and you see the Google apps work like just a hair different on the actual Google Pixel device itself as opposed to working on another device. Like YouTube is like a crazy joy to use a little bit more on the Pixel 7 Pro than it is on the S22 Ultra and the S22 Ultra arguably has the better display. Let's not get that confused with their display. Their display is super solid, but it is Samsung. <laughs> but yet, it's almost more fun, more enjoyable to use YouTube alone on this, ad, on this phone as opposed to my other devices. It's pretty interesting how Google has really been able to refine their software specifically for their hardware as well. And that's the advantage of being in the Google Pixel ecosystem is seeing how Google really does things with their devices and their software and melding them two together, you get just pure bliss. I haven't had no problem with this phone, right? Now, jumping back to hardware, briefly, speakers. They did improve with the update that they dropped for December, but they're still, to me, personally, a balancing issue of it being too heavily dedicated to the bottom firing speakers. When you're watching in landscape mode, you can tell the sound is just more, it's lopsided. I would like some more of that sound to be pushed from the top speakers as well, because that's what they're there for as well. It works fine like this for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the sound curves off your hand and it bounces, it hits you, and it feels like it's coming right at you. But as soon as you go landscape, you you can hear the lopsidedness in the sound. So that's the other nitpick I have, but it doesn't take away from the experience of using the device. With that being said, jumping back to Google Assistant. Google, please get it together with some of these, uh, some of these, uh, ooh wee, I don't even know what to call it. These commands for Google Assistant. I should be able to, even type in the keywords for a routine to start if it's the name of the setting within the settings. 
Like it should work. It should not be like, I can't do this, I can't do that. If it's a setting and I spelt it out as plain as English. So that's the frustration I can have with a system from time to time is like, that's why I don't use always on display on here anymore is because I would at night it stays on even in a pitch dark room it stays on you would think it would turn off like it would be in a pocket but that seems like that's more of a sensor gyroscope function that cuts off the always on display as opposed to just a pitch dark area if it's not sensing anything it should just go off right so at night I can't have either I can't have this in the room or I have to turn it off and I end up just turning it off and that's because the name of the setting I typed in, I also just typed in always on display. I tried all kinds of combinations, quotations, no quotations, all the, and I just could not get it to work. So I just had to do it using a feature overall. And I just resort, resort now to just tapping the screen to turn it on. I don't even use lift awake anymore. As much as I liked it, I don't use it like that anymore. So that is where Google Assistant could use some improvement. And I think even Mr. Who's the Boss, he did like a, an assistant tryout with Siri, Alexa, Bixby, and Google Assistant. And I think he also noticed that the assistant, as great as it is, still struggles in some of the most simplest of areas. So hopefully Google will get on that with Google Assistant. And all of this amounts to battery life. How has the battery life been on this device? Well, in the area I live in, 5G UC, I use T-Mobile, is actually pretty relevant so i'm getting i'm blasting data with this sometimes but you can also tell it heats the phone up a little bit and it will drain now that being said i've not had any problems with the phone making it through the day still i'll get up at 6 30 a.m the phone may or may not have been on the charger so that means i'm either going from 100 percent or like 95 percent because it does not drain at night. Like if this phone's not being used, Google has a software tune where like nothing's active and that is beautifully amazing. So with that being said, 6.30 to 7 a.m., 100% to 95%, and I'll make it through 12 to 14 hours with no charger. And by the time I get home, it's 5.30, 6 o'clock sometimes but i'm going on the on my more extreme base scenarios if i'm gone for 12 hours out of the day and that doesn't all include work of course but that's just traveling and whatnot stopping by a store going to work out if i go from 6 30 to 7 a.m to 6 37 p.m i still have battery life sometimes it's five percent sometimes ten percent sometimes fifteen percent but i have battery life and the difference between the Pixel and Samsung, <laughs> the Galaxies, is that even between zero and 10%, the battery is still chugging along just fine. Now, battery saver cuts on for me, I think, at 15%, or extreme battery saver cuts on for me for sure at 10%. So once I hit 10%, then extreme battery saver mode cuts on and then I start saving more battery life because apps are starting to be disabled, certain functionality is being disabled and it'll extend my battery life. But that's the point of those features is to extend your battery life when you need it. So even if you don't make it to that point, I still have 15% or so of battery life after a full day's work. I get home, put it on the charger, charges for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half, which means it's back off the charger if I put it straight on it when I get home around 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, back off the charger. I'm still up for three hours, so if I wanna use the phone at night, I can. Don't use it throughout the night. It doesn't, it preserves battery life. Run that routine the next day. Or I can wait as long as possible, put it on the charger, leave it on there overnight, then take it off and then go and I have battery life. That's tremendous battery life in my opinion because I'm not sweating it, I'm not thinking about it, I'm not looking at it. And if you're not looking at it, that means it's good because it means you're not worried about it. That's great battery life. And you have the option to extend it with other options such as power saving and extended or extreme battery saver in the case of the Pixel 7 Pro. Battery life has been phenomenal. Even when I did not have my SIM in it for uh, for some time the battery would still last like two two and a half days maybe three days 
just chilling. Like that's how good battery life is on this day. When you're not using it, it's not, it's just like, hey, I'm here, we're not, hey, I'm here. I'm here. So <laughs> great battery life on the Pixel 7 Pro. But let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought about the Google Pixel 7 Pro. That is my review. That's what I thought about it. I had some problems here and there, but overall they're nitpicky problems and Overall, it did not affect my usage of the phone, my thoughts about the phone. Google did it this year. That's why it was a runner-up to phone of the year because in my opinion, the Galaxy S22 Ultra is a phone of the year. It's been out the longest. It has sustained its longevity thus far and it maintains it throughout and into 2023. King of the year, phone of the year, S22 Ultra. Runner-up, Pixel 7 Pro. For the short amount of time it's been out for it to give its run its run for its money is a solid sign of things that come from Google in general. Whew. I'm back with the tech, baby. <laughs> Let me know down in the comment section below you guys' thoughts. But if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that way you can my videos, so that way you can sit back and see what's cracking. And make sure I share the content with people who like tech, who like Google products, Samsung products, tech videos, mobile products. YouTube appreciates it. I appreciate it. It's your man Micah signing out to the next video. Guns coming in, baby. Wait for me.